Welcome back to When Harry Met Board Games, where we feed our people with relatable content and our victory condition is your satisfaction. I'm Harry, and today we have another playthrough and review. Today I'm going to be playing through and reviewing this game right here, Table Golf Association, the ultimate golf dexterity game. Full disclaimer, this is a pay playthrough and review. For more information on the game and their upcoming Kickstarter, check in the description box down below for details and a link. Now, Table Golf Association, referred to as TGA, is just that. It's a golf-themed dexterity game for anywhere from one to eight players. Years, estimated game length of 45 to 90 minutes and a recommended age of 8 and over and this is basically what the game looks like set up and in the box there are enough components for four players to play however you can play up to eight players by forming teams and each player and or team is going to have a golf club to start the game And they're going to get a ball in their respective color to distinguish them from all the other players around the game. Also, if players choose, they can play with these uh, pro cards, these uh, golf pro cards, which I do recommend to play with because they basically give each player a power that makes them unique from all other players around the table. So, for example, this player here is Wendy Waterless. And she does not suffer penalty when ball lands in water hazards. Uh, here we have Tracy Treely, who can hit forward from trees with no penalty. So there is that. So basically, these are special abilities that allow players to bend, tweak the rules, even break the rules in their favor and give them advantages from other players around the table that are unique to them. Now we are going to have one of these scorecards, and we're going to list the name of all the players here and the number of holes that will be played. Players at the beginning of the game are going to agree as to how many holes they're going to play. The rule book recommends to play either 3, 6, 9, or 18 holes. For the purposes of this video, we'll be simulating a two-player game and six holes. Now, the game does come with a ton of these golf pro cards to give players lots of variety as far as the different types of abilities and advantages that they can have. The game also comes with this nice trophy for the winner of the game. We have this uh, spinner right here. We have the weather die that will be rolled throughout the course of the game. Uh, also, we have this nice little reference chart for the hazards, a reminder of how uh, hazards uh, interact with the game and interfere or prevent, uh, present obstacles to the players. Now, the game comes with a bunch of these modular hexagonal uh, tiles, nice, big, large, chunky good-looking tiles that players are going to use in order to create their uh, golf courses. And at the beginning of the game, as I mentioned, players are going to agree as to how many holes they're going to play. And each player is going to create at least one hole. So each player is going to take part in that design of the hole uh, that all the other players are going to have to play in. And the rules as far as setup are concerned is, first of all, you always need a starting tile and a finishing tile with the hole right here. And you need at minimum five additional tiles in between so you cannot play with any fewer than seven tiles per golf course now the player who created the golf course here in the tee box they're going to determine where the starting spot will be and there's three spots here uh, indicated by the red white and blue balls and basically they can make it as far up as possible which makes it a little bit easier or further back now, the player who designed and created the hole is also going to determine the par. That is the amount of shots that is expected for players to complete the hole. So, I'm just going to say that this will be par 3. So, 3 is the amount of shots that is expected uh, for players to complete this hole. Now, I do want to point out I am by no means a golf aficionado. I have never really been a fan of watching golf. I've never played golf. But I must say that back in the day, I did really enjoy the PC uh, golf video games. And I have enjoyed uh, a game or two of miniature golf uh, along the way for whatever that's worth. Um, so... The player here is going to determine that the par for this course is 3. So now we're going to simulate a few rounds to give you guys an idea as to how the game plays. We're going to start with this player here on the left, the player who created this hole. They're going to start and they're going to tell you which tee box of the three potential options 
is going to be the tee box from which all players will start. And they're going to choose the red one right here, which is the closest one to the green, the closest one to the hole. So it's going to be a little bit easier as opposed to the other two options, which are a little bit further back. Now, on a player's turn, the first thing they're going to do is the player is more than one tile away from the green. That is the final tile that includes the hole. If they are more than one tile away from the green, then at the beginning of the turn, they're going to roll the weather die. And the weather die is going to tell you what the weather conditions are right then and right there as you're about to take the shot. So the first thing you do is you roll the die. And in this case, we rolled a uh, double wind. The faces of the die consist of sunny side faces, which basically are neutral weather conditions that don't necessarily impact the play. And then most of the other sides are single wind, which will impact the movement of the ball by one uh, ball space. However, this dreaded double wind here is actually going to move the ball two ball spaces away from where you aim it to. So the next thing a player does uh, to determine the conditions and the impact is they're going to spin this spinner here and you should always align the spinner so that the two arrows are pointing in the direction that the ball is being shot and since we're playing horizontally here we're going to have the arrows facing left and right and now we're going to spin the spinner here okay so whenever uh wherever the ball finishes or wherever the ball lands I'm going to move it in this direction, but because I rolled the double win, I'm going to move it two ball spaces in that direction. So uh, from this angle, it would be to the right and upward diagonally. And now this player here is going to take their shot, and I would like to point out a very important rule referred to as the max fly rule. A player can never make their shot travel more than seven tiles away, and that does not include their starting uh, tile. However, when you are on particular hazard spaces or hazard terrains uh, that affect the conditions of your shot, that could impact or lower the amount as far as the max fly rule is concerned. But in a standard, regular uh, space, then you can shoot up to seven spaces away at maximum. So this player is going to take their turn, and this is a flicking game, so you are going to flick the game. You can choose to use uh, these... Um, golf clubs if you are unable to flick or perhaps players uh, don't feel comfortable flicking uh, that's an optional way of playing the game but we're going to give this a shot here flicking I'm not the greatest flicker but we're going to see how close I can get to the hole okay not too bad uh, I'm at least closer than I was before and now the ball has landed we have to account for the weather conditions and earlier I rolled a double wind and it was pointing upward and to the right, so you will move the ball two ball spaces. That is the equivalent of a space that's the size of the ball. You can use other balls that are not being currently used in order to help. So if I move this one ball space, it would land here. However, if I move it a second ball space, it would actually land outside of the uh, actual tile, which means it's out of bounds. So this actually isn't good for me. Uh, this has gone out of bounds, and whenever you go out of bounds, basically you have a one-shot penalty, so it does count as a shot that you took uh, towards your goal of trying to make par. And then you will, during your next shot, you're going to shoot from the uh, a tile that you originally shot from last time. So next time this player is going to shoot from here. So that's not necessarily uh, good news right there. Now we're going to move on to the next player and they're going to go here and they're going to also roll the weather die and they're going to see what they got here. And they too rolled the double win and there's only one side of the die that has the double win but unfortunately both players have done the same. And they're going to spin the spinner here and wherever they shoot, it's going to go almost straight forward with a slight tilt to the right. So that's actually not too bad. That's actually pretty good news. So now this player here, uh, they're going to aim, try to keep it uh, not too much to the right because they don't want to make the same mistake as this player here. And let's see what they can do. They're going to flick it. All right, that's pretty good. And again, I did the double win and it's going to go slightly uh, upward and to the right and it would be two ball spaces if you don't have extra balls you could always just kind of eye it here and that's one ball space and that's two ball space in the right direction so I'm even closer to where I 
uh, need to be. And I did land on the rough, and the rough here does come with some uh, particular restrictions. So if you check out this helpful hazard reference chart, it tells you that the next time I will shoot, I'm going to have to shoot with any finger, but it has to be from my non-dominant hand. It also includes the max fly, or it limits the max fly to five as opposed to seven, but that's not really relevant because this player is really close to the green anyhow. But I'm going to have to shoot with my non-dominant hand the next time the red player uh, takes a turn. Now, in any event, if your shot actually makes it to the hole, then you will disregard any other weather conditions that were indicated by the die and the spinner. So we're going to go back to the blue player here, and let's see what they can do here. They're going to roll the weather die, and they rolled a single win. Luckily for them, they're going to spin the spinner here, and their shot is going to go a little bit to the right diagonally, so that's something for them to consider. Again, they don't want to make the mistake of getting too much on the edge over here, so let's see what we can do. Oh, goodness. Ooh, let's see. So if we put this one ball space uh, diagonally to the right, then this ball would kind of be half off of the tile, but not completely. So he's not quite yet out of bounds, but that was very close. This player should have been more careful and not get it that close. But luckily for them, they're fine. They are in the rough, so they are going to have to shoot with any finger from their non-dominant hand next turn. But they're just happy uh, to have advanced. Now we're going to go back to the red player. And because they're only one tile away from the green, they no longer have to roll the weather die. So they're just simply going to take their shot and it's not going to be impacted. And they can shoot with any finger from the non-dominant hand. That would be my left. I'm a righty. And I think I'm, a, I'm more comfortable. If it's my left, I'm more comfortable with my middle finger. So I'm going to give it a shot here and see if I can make it. And oh, I knocked this one off by mistake. I got really, really close to the hole here. Not quite inside, but that's fine. That's my second shot. So this is a par three course. So as long as I make it on my next shot, I should at least make par. And now this player is going to have the challenge of trying to make it in. And he has that, tie, uh, that ball in his way. So this player is going to go and they are going to roll the weather die because they are more than one space away so they still got to account for that and luckily for them they rolled the sunny side of the die so there are no impact but this is going to be a little tricky this player is in the rough gonna have to do it with my non-dominant hand my left hand again and they're on the edge so i gotta be careful or else uh i could easily go out of bounds again so let's see what we could do here Oh, goodness, that's terrible. Okay, so at least uh, the player has a little bit more space to work with next turn. This was their third shot, so they are going to uh, go above par, so their score is not necessarily going to be good if you know anything about golf, which I'm not a golf aficionado or expert at all, but if you know anything about golf, the uh, fewer the shots, obviously the better, and you'll have a score in the negative, as opposed to if you take more shots than par, you'll have a positive score, which is not necessarily a good thing. Okay, so this player is done. We're going to go back to this player, and they are here, and they simply have to flick it in, a gentle little flick, and it's in. Okay, and they made it in exactly three shots, which this is a par three course. And they would pen that in in the scorecard here, indicating that it took them three shots to make it in. They would put that on the upper side of this. And then they would put their score, which is actually uh, E, even, because it took them three shots in order to make it. Now, if they had done it in less than three, their score would have been in the negative, which, again, is a good thing. If they would have done it in more than three, their score would have been a positive which again would be a bad thing. So this player is done. We're going to go to this player here. And this is their fourth shot. And this player here is very lucky that they landed on the uh, safe patch of grass over here on this tile. Because this here is the ridge tile. Where if their ball would have landed on the squiggly line. It actually would have rolled in the direction of this arrow that's printed here. 
and it would have been placed where the arrow and the next tile meet and it would have to follow the hazard restrictions of the adjacent tile which here would be the rough which again would mean that the player would have to be uh, flicking with their left but in this case because they're on this nice safe terrain the player does have the option to flick with his right however this player is again still more than one space away from the green so they will have to roll the die and they rolled a single win here so we will spin the spinner and they spin this right here so wherever their shot ends up it's going to be pushed back a little bit towards the right diagonally one ball space so that's something to consider. But again, if this player is able to make the shot in the hole, you would disregard any other win conditions. So let's see if this player can get it done. Let's take this ball out of the way here and let's see what we can do. Oh, out of bounds. So again, they will suffer a one-shot penalty and have their next shot start from where they took their previous shot. And this is pretty much it as far as Table Golf Association plays. Players are going to continue uh, playing hole by hole until they've played all the holes that they agreed to play on previously. And the player who has the best score at the end is the winner. If you are a golf fan, I feel like this is a game that you must have. There's not enough uh, golf games out there, tabletop golf games. Not to mention the fact if you're a fan of dexterity, then again, I think this is a game you should consider because the combination of the theme as well as the dexterity mechanisms. I feel that they're very well combined. I like the element of the spinners and the uh, dice here to combine for the randomness of the weather that real golf players do have to take for account. I love the concept of the modular uh, boards and co golf courses that players will create. It's almost like a game before the game, and it's a fun, enjoyable experience even trying to decipher what type of um, golf course you're going to make as the player. The variable player powers here in the golf pro cards, as I mentioned, indispensable element of the game because it makes you feel unique, and it gives you special abilities that you can use to determine what strategies you want. Perhaps you won't, you're not going to be avoiding water or sand or trees as other players around the table might because you are uh, exempt from their hazards. Therefore, you don't have to worry about those particular areas as much. Uh, really cool. I give it two thumbs up. If you like golf, if you like dexterity, this is absolutely a game you have to consider. Uh, this game is coming out on Kickstarter really soon. I believe as soon as tomorrow. Check in the description box down below for more information and a link to that campaign. Thank you so much for joining us here with Harriman Board Games. This is Harry saying take care, everybody. Stay safe, stay healthy, and have fun gaming. Bye-bye.